they do. Boris Johnson will try to reboot his government this week with a series of post-Brexit reforms designed to boost the economy and reunite the coalition of voters who brought him to power three years ago. It's his last chance to implement significant legislative reform before the next election. Boris Johnson is going to announce measures designed to capitalise on Britain's departure from the EU, update the planning system and improve standards in schools. So reports the Times this morning. Let's reflect further on this. Get some analysis from Bill Bouquet, reporter at Reaction.life, political commentator and contributor to Young Voices UK. Bill, good morning. Morning to you, Callum. Uh, so then, are we, I don't know, are we drawn in by this bonfire of EU laws is the headline on the front page of the Times, this post-Brexit reboot being planned by the Prime Minister, the Queen's speech, of course, coming tomorrow. Uh, basically, this is, an, this is an attempt to move on from, from some pretty grim local election results, is it not? It is, and I feel like we've been hearing this word about Boris Johnson having to reboot his leadership uh, for quite a long time now, and there's been various measures that the government has had to introduce to distract itself from whether it's the Partygate scandal, sleaze in, within the Tory party, the soaring cost of living crisis. Uh, and this seems like with these Brexit bills bonanza that's going to take some stage as part of uh, the Queen's speech as a way to not only uh, kind of appease uh, voters after the drubbing that they had last week in the local council elections, uh, but also to kind of rekindle uh, Downing Street's relationship with Tory backbenchers, whose, um, you know, support of the Prime Minister uh, has also dwindled uh, over the past few months. There are expected to be more than 30 bills in the Queen's speech. Um, in terms of, uh, I suppose, leadership, um, this is something to commend, is it not, from Boris Johnson, that, that you know this is a, a redirection. There have been a lot of distractions. He's weathering the storm so far. And so this is about being a leader and being Prime Minister at this point. It is, but it's also, at least from my interpretation, a sign of desperation because, as you rightly mentioned, this is the last chance to implement significant reforms before the next general election, which is likely to be next year. It might even possibly be uh, this year. Some reports, for instance, in Business Insider because of the state of the uh, economy. And while there are issues uh, kind of revolving around Britain's departure from the European Union that do need to be addressed, particularly around GDPR, uh, around investment in the long term, um, raising animal welfare standards. Um, I feel like with these measures, it, it's been delayed, it's been pushed back quite a lot because of the coronavirus pandemic, the war in Ukraine, and with the attention sorely focused on uh, the Prime Minister's you know, tenuous leadership, uh, he has to rally up his support as much as he can um, if come the next election, um, that base, not just from... Uh, you know, true blue areas in which have voted Conservative for decades, but also those red wall seats, uh, which look to be turning away from uh, the Conservative Party um, in its handling uh, of, 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 of our national politics at this moment in time. Mm. Well, let's pick up on that and consider the Liberal Democrats, shall we, which is a, a sentence we've probably not said particularly much in the last few years, let's be honest. The Liberal Democrats refusing over the weekend to rule out a post-election pact with Labour, uh, a cabinet minister calling on Boris Johnson to address the threat to the Conservative blue wall. Uh, this report in the Times as well this morning. So some quite significant gains from the local elections um, by the Lib Dems, uh, who took 19% of the vote in Thursday's elections. Um, and so they've now released a list of 10 Conservative seats that, that would be vulnerable based on local election results. Is this a return to, to multi-party politics and, and a role, really, a significant role for the Liberal Democrats? Well, you make a good point about multi-party politics, not just the Liberal Democrats, Green Party mm. also did very well uh, in the local elections too. Um, and like you said, they had a very successful campaign, winning around... 200 councillors, winning several councils as well, and, and posing a direct threat uh, to, you know, Conservative Party, more so than the Labour Party is at the moment. My only reservation is whether that would translate, you know, when it does come to a general election, should, should it come about in the next year or so, because while they did take 90% of, you know, the popular vote, uh, last week, uh, polling suggests that they wouldn't have that same level of 
uh, support when it comes to when it comes to general election, where first past the post is highly dominated at the direct benefit of mm. the Tories and also Labour. So, so so long as they, you know, have a clear cut message which they can put to, you know, maybe the the blue wall. Uh, which they seem to be targeting more so than than other areas of, of the country. Um, then there's every chance that we're putting behind, you know, the years of the last coalition and also the Joe Swinson era, where they seem to be, you know, campaigning vehemently against Britain leaving the European Union. Um, then the Liberal Democrats may, potentially, if they were to go in coalition with. The Labour Party, they, they ruled out being in coalition with the Tory party, and then we might see a return to government for Britain's uh, biggest third party. Gosh, uh, on our local election coverage on overnight on Thursday and into Friday morning, Adam Bolton kept using the phrase hung parliament, which I think was enough to give palpitations to anyone who was listening <laughs> to that. Gosh, remember the chaos of that a few years ago? It's fascinating to consider that that, you know, that, that could be the reality after the next election, though. It might, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, the thing with projections uh, around kind of the local elections uh, and then maybe forecasting it for general elections is not exactly accurate, given the fact that local elections have such a such a low turnout. But at this moment of time, I think if you're looking at maybe realistic scenarios, then what you could see is, is that maybe. You know, the Tories would lose several MPs in the Red Wall and also in, in its more traditional seats and, and also in marginal seats. Labour makes some gains. So too do the Liberal Democrats and maybe the South. Uh, and the opportunity then comes maybe for the Labour Party where they could think, well, if we want to have this progressive alliance with the Liberal Democrats where we could uh, you know, introduce a windfall tax on energy firms and cut VAT, which both parties are in agreement on, um, then there's every chance that uh, that they could create a bond together. Really good to speak to you this morning, Bill. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Gavin. Thanks for your time. That's Bill Bouquet, reporter at Reaction.life, political commentator and contributor to Young Voices UK. It's five- 